Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Equityverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the S&P 500 and the most recent rejection off of the 200-day moving average. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the Into the Equityverse Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we've talked a lot about, about the stock market, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, et cetera, and how it relates to the US dollar currency index, how it relates to inflation, want to provide a general update. One of the things we've spoken about at length before is how inflation year over year tends to peak when, or I should say it the other way, the stock market or the S&P 500 tends to bottom when inflation year over year peaks. We've seen that occur uh, a couple of times in the history of, of the stock market. So if I just briefly pull it up, uh, I, can, I can show you that. So you can see right here in not only, not only in the 1970s, you can see that inflation peaked right here, the first peak, that's where the S&P bottomed. And then you can also see it occurring in the 1940s. And now arguably, um, you know, market participants right now are sort of speculating that inflation year over year has peaked. And that, you know, potentially helped fuel this rally back up to the 200 day simple moving average, right? So the 200 day SMA for the S&P is currently coming in um, at around, well, this is SPY. This is uh, cu currently coming in at, at 4.30. If we pull up um, this one, uh, it's 43.15. Okay, so um, 43.15 and 53 cents. But you can see we, in fact, got rejected off of that level not too long ago. And it corresponded not only to the 200-day moving average, but also um, this general downtrend line that we've been following for quite some time. Now, the interesting thing is that you know, this rally, as I, as I just said, has been potentially fueled by market participants sort of thinking that if inflation year over year has peaked, then this could, in fact, be the bottom for, for the S&P. Of course, there always is the risk that inflation has not yet peaked and, and it's just sort of a, a, a local drop before we, before we ultimately push higher. I will say there, I mean, there is certainly some evidence that inflation has peaked. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you go look at, at where we are right now, if every time we had a pullback, you would, you would assume it had peaked, you would have been wrong. And in fact, if you earlier, I, I just went to Google and typed in like, you know, inflation peak um, and looked at various articles about it. And a lot of the articles that pop up also showed up like in March when when I think a lot of people thought this was the peak for inflation. Now, again, there, there has been more, you know, more headway has been uh, obtained since then. And I, I do think, you know, de some demand is coming down. Uh, we have seen oil come down quite a bit, although that's, there's no guarantees there. In fact, I mean, there, there is a possibility that we, we could see oil break out. I mean, actually it looks like it is starting to break out a little bit here. If oil were to come back up, it could actually help renew uh, inflation fears and continue to provide pressure, downward pressure on the stock market. So I do think that's worthwhile to follow. You know, where will we ultimately head with with things like oil um, over the coming over the coming months? Um, of course, it, you know, inflation is is core inflation and, and CPI takes into account a lot of other things, not just oil, but it is an important component that a lot of people keep an eye on. So I would say, you know, the S and P this is a a, a pretty nice. Uh, local bottom here. I think that the main way that we would take that low out would be if inflation fears are renewed. Because if inflation fears are not renewed, then it would provide more evidence that the Fed will ultimately pivot. My, my line of thinking for the entire year, as you guys know, is that the Fed will probably not pivot this year, but they're more likely to pivot next year. Because they're not, you know, I, I don't really see them being so concerned about about the short term implications of, of stocks when inflation is coming in still at eight and a half percent year over year. And I think the bigger question is, is, you know, what if inflation year over year has peaked, but it remains elevated at like eight to nine percent for the next three to four months? That's also not going to look good, even if the actual peak is in. OK, so I think that's also something important to consider. And, and we'll have to see exactly how high they're going to raise interest rates. I, I think right now, um, market participants are, are pricing in. It kind of has been going back and forth for the last few weeks. Um, but 50 basis points, maybe 75. I, I know it keeps flip-flopping back and forth, but I would say 50 basis points seems to be the most likely right now with some people thinking it's actually going to be 75. Doubt it's going to be any higher than 75 for, you know, when we, when we get that next month. So we still have about a month 
um, before that occurs. But of course, we're also going to get more inflation data before, before we also know how much more the Fed will raise interest rates at their next meeting in um, late September. So uh, after this rejection off of the 200-day SMA and the downtrend line, the S&P has come back down to right around 4130 or so, which is actually where this local top was as well. You know, if inflation fears are renewed, and um, uh, which is, uh, is certainly a, a plausible risk, then you know that we could easily come back down and, and either retest these lows or take out that lows. I know a common place that people look at are the, the, the pre-COVID highs as the potential soft landing zone, so to speak. They've talked about a soft landing, of course, the Fed. That would be more or less the soft landing zone if we can achieve a soft landing. Um, of course, that's still a bearish outlook from here. I know a lot of people are actually bullish going uh, going forward. So I think it does remain, it, it does make sense to be somewhat flexible here and just sort of go where the data ultimately takes us, right? If inflation fears subside, then, you know, there's a higher chance the Fed can pivot sooner, still probably going to happen next year, and maybe we'll come down and, and then, you know, go back up. But if on the other hand, inflation fears are not, um, you know, sort of subdued, then uh, we can easily easily go back down and, and retest this low or take out a prior low. So we'll continue to monitor inflation data as it comes in, you know, more or less on a, on a monthly basis. And then I think the other thing to look at with regards to the S&P, not only is inflation data, but also the US dollar currency index, which has seen a fairly impressive rally back up to the prior local top. Okay, so um, if you look at this on the daily, you can see that the, the US dollar currency index has, has sort of rebounded off of this low right here, and it's all the way back up to around 108, 109. Earlier today, looks like it hit 109.27. The previous local high was at 109.294. So we almost made it there. Um, uh, but we didn't we didn't actually quite put in a new local high, but you can see that that's exactly where it went to earlier today. So the dollar, remember, as it goes up, it's a sign that investors are going more risk off because they simply do not want to take the the risk of being in uh, risk assets where basically there's a lot more volatility and um, uh, they only tend to do well when when sort of like the fed is on your side and and they're and they're printing money and you know there's just really nowhere else to put it but in a risk off environment when the dollar is rallying like this obviously market participants or at least some market participants are wary of of continuing to stay super um or, or fairly well positioned into into risk assets and you can see that the dollar hit this first to lo local top in mid july and now we're you know coming in here in, in late august to see if it's actually going to take that out if the dollar continues to rally higher uh which certainly could you know could be the case i mean i know the euro has been looking relatively weak against the dollar recently uh going below parity once again you can see it's right now it's coming in at 0.9964 so again this is is you know more evidence arguably that the dollar is going to continue to rally remember the dollar is just uh you know the the, the valuation of of dxy is just because it's compared the us dollar is compared to a weighted uh, a weighted basket of other um of other currencies so you know as long as as long as these trends remain in, in effect arguably the dollar still has a lot of pressure under it uh to to continue pushing higher and if that's the case it could still prove rather difficult for risk assets to maintain these rallies. I do think we will come out of this, um, you know, this bear market, you know, if not, if not later this year, I, I would assume next year at some point, and, and we'll, we'll slowly start to trend back up. But clearly in the short term, we are facing some resistance here at the 200 day SMA and the downtrend line. And if you go look at the NASDAQ, you can see a fairly, a fairly similar story. I mean, it, it was rejected off the 200 day over here, but it's also been rejected off of the same downtrend line that we've been facing for um, basically for the entirety of this year. So uh, we'll continue to follow this and see see where it ultimately ends up. The key areas I, I would suppose to, to, to look out for the S&P uh, longer term, uh, of course, there's the 200 day SMA, which we already have on there. But the 200 week is is another um, area of um, pretty strong support. And, and it's actually coming in just above the the, the highs before the, the, the pandemic. So if you look at the pandemic right before we dropped, that's where that is. The 200 week is, is just a bit higher than that. So 
That's currently coming in at, at just below 3,600, which is actually where we went <laughs> almost already. So these are the things that I'm watching. I mean, the 200 week has held support in the past. Doesn't mean it can't do it again. You can see over here in March 2020, we, we quickly took those out. Um, but these things take a long time to play out. Remember, they're likely not going to go anywhere until it's more obvious that inflation fears are, are subdued, that oil is coming down, that you know food is staying down, a lot of other commodities that they're staying down. Real estate is probably the biggest thing that's going to continue to, to put upward pressure on inflation uh, over the next several months. So still have some time, I think, to go before we can be a little bit more confident that the Fed's going to pivot until then. Um, we'll just have to be patient. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.